Welcome to the Oso oh Spurs podcast, where we have just lost 4 0 to. Who did we lose to again? I can't remember. Newcastle. That was it. I always raise it from my memory. <laughs> but if you're looking for an unhappy place that's going to tell you Andrew's no plan B, you're in the wrong spot, unfortunately. However, he is due some gentle questions, I think it's fair to say. But there we go. Um, so with us today, we've got Johnny. How are you, mate? Thanks to Villa and thanks to the Spurs ladies. Much better form than I was on Saturday, kind of early afternoon. But yeah, the way you pop. Doing good. Yeah, I mean, whenever Arsenal lose, I don't care what's good for us. Seeing yeah. Arsenal lose to Aston Villa really cheered me up on Sunday. So, and, yeah. and the women getting to the women's yeah. top team getting to, to the final was awesome Brilliant. as well. So, yeah. yeah. And you, Stu, how are you, mate? I'm fine. I'm fine. I was a bit annoyed on Saturday afternoon, but by now I'm all right. And not just... The, the filth losing, but Liverpool also losing. So Klopp's fairy tale ending also disappearing after the Atalanta yes. humiliation in midweek. Wow, it's been a wonderful few days. <laughs> yes. Well, there, there was. We'll, we can take those two defeats of our Arsenal Liverpool into the start of this pod, I think, because there's there's been a lot of questions around like, is this a unique Spurs problem? And everyone arguing like. Why can we only not beat the low block? Why do we concede? Why do we lose the ball in the opposition third and then see it in our own net 10 seconds later? This is a Tottenham problem, right? Yeah. And then I watched the Liverpool game and saw Palace then lose the ball in Palace's third and then quickly concede. Then watched Arsenal do the same twice against Aston Villa. If you put Tottenham shirts on those Arsenal players through AI or something, you'd think it was that, you know, our game conceding those goals. So... My question is, and I'm kind of setting the answer up here in a very biased way, Johnny, is this problem a Spurs problem, an Ange problem, or is it just a big six going up against a low block problem? Yeah, I know. Unquestionably, I mean, even Man City, they were being gave up the crew that they destroyed, the Luton in the end, but it was like, yeah, it was up pretty much at one end of the pitch. I guess they spent the Greek and the down was DC the other day, like, a ball against the floodgates eventually open and their, their level of quality is, you know, that much more than anybody's really, I suppose, uh, certainly a lot better than ours in the, in the top end of the pitch. But, uh, yeah, I, th- I think the issue in terms of scoring goals is not so much of a, a, a contrast between the size. I, th- I think what I'd be a little bit more concerned about or a lot more concerned about, I suppose, is, is areas where I think we can obviously maybe address things and but there's no obvious improvement which like I'm thinking particularly about set pieces and I think you come back mm. to the goals that we conceded that you're um, equating to the ones that we we let and especially but obviously the power one was like just mental uh, and then the counter to the, the first goal like that is just like yeah, that's exactly the sort of goal that Arsenal were conceding yesterday with Balkans and it's it is worrying, and you just sort of wonder. I, I'm not uh, obviously any UEFA badges or anything like that, but um, you know when you've got the midfield so high up, there's literally nobody to block the the guys when they're running through, and like there's two goals scored when the when the guy is in an offside position, but he's not offside because he's in his own half. Like that's kind of yeah. that's kind of mad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was so no to, to answer your question. No, I don't think it is. I think I think we just. We're definitely lacking something up at the top end of the pitch uh, massively uh, in terms of breaking teams down, including Madison's way off where he was earlier and is so congested up there. It's really, really difficult. But every side is having the same problem. Um, but clearly, the numbers and the speed at which sides can break, even if uh, Van de Ven's there, he can't be mm. on every part of the every blade of grass simultaneously. So, yeah. Well, Stu, what do you make of... <clears throat> I've read a theory today that... The reason we concede goals is because of our front three, not our back four, weirdly. And that's explained by when City's front three go forward, they so rarely lose the ball, they don't lose they themselves. themselves exposed to a counter. But Spurs have a front three who none of them really can take on their man and confidently beat them, and none of them can confidently pass through the lines either. So they're constantly leaving themselves exposed. Do you agree with that, or do you think it's a bit deeper than just, you know, Werner and Johnson not dribbling past their men and some losing the ball often cheaply. Is, is there more to it than that? Or is it? I, I, I mean, I, obviously, it's not that simple a solution, but I think that does play a huge role. I mean, the amount of times I was getting annoyed and I even was said to my mate Christian at, at the pub, I was like, I'd have been embarrassed 
with some of the ball control, like the passes that were just bouncing off feet and like going two or three yards. It's like, you know, I'm rubbish and I could probably do as, as bad as that. I mean, it was embarrassing um, for, for top professionals that, you know, we're playing into them. Okay, yes, they've got defenders around them, but they should be able to keep the ball closer. And then, as you know, as you said, then they get the ball, hit us on the break as we're pushing everyone forward. Um, but I, I do think... Um, we are missing a very strong number six. I think Basuma was doing a much better job protecting the back four, uh, or the, the back two, I should say, because the, the wing backs are, are going forward a lot better in the first 10 games. And I think that's where we are struggling because he's not being able to do that um, in the recent mm. games, unfortunately. It does feel like this, the biggest divide between Spurs and Arsenal is Declan Rice and Spurs and City is a player like Rodri. Like that's where you, you look at midfield and you go, who's in there that I can really rely on? Um, there's everyone's either out of form, carrying some form of injury and trying to play their way back, or they're simply just not the right player for that six role that we desperately need to make the system work swimmingly, right? It just feels like, would that be your number one priority in the summer of you, Arrange? Or would you be looking at, those wide players before the before the midfielder. It probably is a priority, and because like you're conceding far too many goals, and like you said, and as you said, it was sick, that's that's a big part of the game. I know, I know. At the moment, we've conceded fewer goals per game last year, but last year was really crap. And if we're going to be looking to challenge further, not well, just challenge to get into Europe, but to actually, you know, be in in a, a race. Whether we're really realistically title challengers next year, I think absolutely nowhere near at the moment. Um, but you know, over the summer that can improve. I, I do think that that's probably the number one priority. But the more I, the more I see um, the last couple of months, how because of the way the teams are defending against us, and I know that there isn't isn't the the, the sort of you know a magic bullet or anything. But we don't have a finisher, and when when I I kind of starting to move much more in that direction. I I get the fact that at the moment, like football, I mean, the chances that are falling to um, Burner the other day because like it's quite easy to to talk about the game the other day and you know be and, and it's it's fair and it's right that really doom and gloom about how crap we were after Newcastle scored. But we were probably the better team on balance in the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it was before they scored. It wasn't a lot in it, but we were playing badly. And obviously we had those two huge chances for Werner. Like we talked about Sonny having some kind of really weird problem with shooting over the, the last yeah. uh, month or so as well. And not not taking chances when they're coming along and taking extra touches. Um, Obviously, richardson has got a serious, you know, he's got an ongoing kind of issue with, with uh, injuries. And the kind of the, the more the season goes on and these games are coming along, I think if, and, and I'm sorry, I really don't want to say this, but like if, if Kane hadn't left, the difference it would have made in so many ways. Um, but particularly, uh, well, the hold at play is massive because some can't do that. And then also the, the finishing. So for me, I, I'm really kind of. Like we have nobody who's bloody scoring goals. Like you send Jim at the start of the year and we're down, down right out. we need players from all parts of the pitch that can ship in. And none of those players are doing that. Like Madison's not scoring goals either. Like there's uh, from Midfield, who's scoring goals? You know, we they miss the here and there. We do we actually miss Richie. Richie. Yeah, we Richie. do we do miss Richie, but and I, I really I I wouldn't be as down on him as, as a lot of fans would be. I just would be a bit sceptical. Like, look back at the days when we had, I know it's not the same night playing. We had, like, Defoe and Keane and Berbatov and maybe, I don't know, Pavlyshenko or something like that, all in the same squad. Do you know, like, who who is scoring our goals? And I'm not saying that's more important, but, like, you need to score goals as well. Like, at the moment, we're not, we're just not really. Yeah. You can't you know. just rely on having Son on the pitch and playing him out of position and then him being a world-class yeah, exactly. finisher and just occasionally just but, through being the world's best finisher, just doing it. Can you, Stu? <laughs> I, I agree. But I, 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 and I think that the problem is that Son is great when he's got space to run into. Yeah. But as yeah. we talked about a lot too long ago, his, his close ball control isn't great. Um, and what all the teams are doing is basically setting up a wall so it's all tight, and he doesn't have those skills. And I think Richie's a lot more physical, and he—that's that's why true. I think he'd have been able to 
you know, we miss him. He'd have been able to have a bigger impact. But yeah, I, I think we do need to find a solution to that striker. And again, I was saying to, to, to my friend at the pub that anybody else in the front three, you'd want those two chances to fall to rather than Warner. It was, you know, it changed the game. I mean, who, who knows what would happen, but if we'd have scored yeah. first, we, we were doing okay. And then obviously they scored and mm-hmm. that was it. We clearly need, we need a six. <clears throat> we need a left winger who can contribute to yeah. goals. And we need, uh, if it's not Richarlison, a striker that we believe we can rely on to stay fit and, and be that person. And that's just a minimum, isn't it? That, yeah, that's a right, right back. I think we yeah. need a backup to Madison. And we need a backup to Madison. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, an alternative to Madison. Someone who's yeah. perhaps a bit more like, I see Madison as the type of guy who's, who really is a luxury game specific player. You put him in the right environment <clears throat> against the right teams. He he flourishes, but if you put him in a really tight, nasty, stereotypical Stoke on a Tuesday night game, it <clears throat> it's not the environment for him. But what about Stuart? There's a player you might know. He plays in the um, Dutch league. He plays for um, um, Feyenoord. Jimenez. Santiago Jimenez. Yeah, he's been linked to us quite a lot recently. Young striker, scored 34 goals and 60 appearances. Yeah, th- th- this season, he's not on the same form he was last season. Um, and I know in the Dutch uh, press, they're all saying Feyenoord need to sell him now while well, he's still got you know, some sell-on value. They don't think he's going to be a superstar. Uh, and I think it is very difficult to buy a player from Holland. We've been burnt with Janssen. We've been burnt with Bergwijn. I'm not sure he's the one. I think the one with more potential would maybe be Bakayoko, but maybe he needs another year to, to still get a little bit better. But he's a, he's a winger rather than a striker. And he's more the right wing, even than um, the left. So I think we'd look for that as well, right? Even though Johnson is vastly improved and he, again, like Madison, I feel like Johnson's a certain game kind of player or like you need those two options. When you want someone who's going to whip in a beautiful ball to this, you know, reliable number nine you have, that's where Brennan Johnson, you want him on the pitch. But when you're chasing a low block and you want someone who's going to just run at their man into tight spaces and try to dribble around him, that's where we need that alternative option. I've got a question for you guys. I was thinking about this this morning. Do you think that as we're getting towards the end of the season, qualifying for Champions League is in the players' minds and they're getting a little bit too tight because of that? Because if the way, I was looking at you know the game on, on Saturday and we had, what was it, 70-odd percentage of the ball, but no one had the courage to do anything with it. They were all passing it back, hoping that the next guy was going to do something. Whereas at the beginning of the season, everybody was willing to try and take a man on, try and do something. And now it, it seems like we're playing, like we're nervous. Mm. Yeah, I, I go on, Jeremy. No, no, I, I, no, I'm just thinking exactly the same thing, and and, and it, it was much more reminiscent of Conte uh, football, wasn't it? Like just the tapping around from side to side, or going going backwards as well. Like I mean, Benfica was passing the ball backwards all the time. Yeah, and 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 I think the other thing that worries me a little bit was like the the physical side of things. Because I know that that's an asset to the Newcastle game, but it's not as if our players are a bunch of pansies, you know. Like we were um, getting bullied off, off, the, yeah. off the ball everywhere. And um, go back to the, the point that we touched on earlier, and I know it's kind of a, a very prominent narrative about the, the set piece issues that we've got, but that fourth goal where um, Cher comes in, like another un, another unchallenged setter. Like, how many times mm-hmm. have we conceded goals? Like a, a big fella jumping up, but the great delivery, and 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 it's another goal. Like the, these are the areas that sure, you know you kind of think we don't get didn't get to the position we are on the table by playing like that or being that easy to score against. I know that there have been some issues, like the set piece issues has been there for the for the year, uh, but it seems to like I'm I'm more and more nervous. So when when we have corners at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really that nervous. Can't think of a you know, either since you have Vicario deals with things because we didn't know Vicario all that much at that point. But since the kind of turn of the year, that that seems to just become become massive. And I mean, I guess you you sort of think at this stage, everyone is talking about the the final outcome, final positions, the championship, and everything else. And the same every time you switch on, it's all about like you know now Aston Villa or the favourites, etc. They obviously were 
played really, really well yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so you can only imagine that that has to have an effect on the Bears, but you want them to be brave. I mean, I think in, in many ways, the, the Derby being our next game is kind of like if you were going to choose a game, you would probably it's be a good time to, to play them. I know that they're going to be here after, well, after yesterday. But um, and and clearly, if we play like we did on Saturday, they absolutely steamroll us. But it's obviously um, the 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 thing about that that worries me is is obviously the fifteen day gap could go either way as well. I don't. Know. I, I I think that and the the players have to turn up against Arsenal. And what you're describing there, Stu, just if if they played anything vaguely reminiscent of what happened yesterday, it could get very very ugly. Yeah. Um, and hopefully. The, the players won't allow that to happen because the fans are going to be baying for, you know, uh, Arsenal's. I was going to say, on Madison getting sent. <laughs> yeah, no. He should be sent off. I mean, he, he should have. He, he, there's two yellows. He should have had two yellows. Should be like the but he, he's been an idiot was... for the last few games. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, be yeah, he struggles with his head space, doesn't he? It does seem like that. But it's funny, isn't it? Like, I was looking at the previous results in the second half of the season. Every time we have a great result, Seems to follow <laughs> our worst performance, and our worst performance typically follows our That's best right. performance. Yeah. Our best performance typically follows our worst performance. So, yeah, yeah we, we beat Forest 3 1 at home, everyone's buzzing, we lose 4 0 to Newcastle. We beat Villa 4 0 away, everyone's buzzing, we lose 3 0 to Fulham. And it goes back a bit further than that. You know, I think we beat Brighton 2 1 and then go on to lose 1 0 uh, to someone relatively rubbish after that. But anyway, look, it's, it's dated itself pretty much since those first 10 games, which were a bit, you know, where we were steamrolling, well, not steamrolling, but getting through every game with mm. a win. That seems to be the the trend. But also on the set pieces, do you remember when we were talking about Van der Ben when we first sound, sounded, right? we had those, you know, you get those wheels of yeah. like 20 out of 20 pace and all that stuff. But he was shocking in the air on those yep. stats. And we did flag like, is this going to be an issue with this guy? <clears throat> He's not very good in the air. And it does seem like that is, I, I, don't, I don't have many memories of him leaping up and heading a ball away confidently. Yeah. He's just, maybe that's not why he's in the team, but they're still the set piece coaches. They don't put it on the player. You sign a player, you know their weaknesses, but you use the squad to yeah. mitigate the weaknesses of other individuals. So I do think there's a conversation which I, d I don't agree with a lot of Chris's managers had. Like, I think he's right to stick to the plan, the philosophy, drill it into the players, give them time, let them sign the right people, make it work. But what I think is a fair criticism is the set piece is have been an issue for months now and we've stuck with the set piece coach and likes a hands-off approach on training but someone needs to be saying if they're not already to that individual how are we going to mitigate this because we clearly you know have a huge weakness here that's being exploited by other teams and no, we don't want a single cross to do it <clears throat> no it's no. completely clueless aimless yeah. there's just the same but, coordination there I, I do want to make a, a point that I made on a pod a few weeks ago that never actually saw the light of day. Um, <laughs> that this is the Premier League that everyone goes on about being the toughest league in the world. And yet, we've lost away from home against a team who at home do have a good record, great fan base. It's not the end of the world. It's not that crazy. Look what happened to Liverpool at home. Look who Arsenal lost to that we played off the pitch. You know, these results will happen. It, we're not playing in the Bundesliga against crap teams every week or Spain where you're going to thump everybody 5-0 every week. It's a tough league. And, every, you know, if you think about it, the likes of Nottingham Forest were outspending the Giants on the continent. You know, mm -hmm. every team has got internationals, great coaches, expensive players. You know, a little bit of perspective every now and then wouldn't go amiss. Yeah. And like we said before, Liverpool have been losing or drawing their last five games at half time, right? I think someone said there was a stat like there's been 21 matches this season across all the competitions that were losing or drawing at half time. Yeah. yeah. It's just us. It's just our problem. We can't beat the low block. No. No one except Man City seems to be able to comfortably beat a low block. And quite often they've gone in 1 0 down or 1 all at half time. The difference is they go, Should we chuck on that 100 million pound winger and Jack Grealish and the other two guys who cost 50 million quid each? Yeah, like mix it up a bit. Oh, and throw on another world class um, you know, midfielder as well. We're at it to mix it up. We've got all the pointers on the bench. I forgot we arrested him. You know, yeah. it's just 
that's just not the real world for someone like Spurs. So even Arsenal, we saw that Odegaard comes off at half time. They lose their playmaker. They lose the ball twice in the final third of the pitch as a result. And counter attack, Bosch, 2 0, lost. It's normal. It's yeah. just normal. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. I think we just, yeah, we're happy to get overexcited when we beat Villa 4 0. And then it's the world's over when we lose 4 0. It's just, uh, yeah. But that's 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 Spurs and that's sporting us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, and I think, like you said earlier, um, Jim, I know that Ben Johnson, like none of our players, are particularly brilliant the other day. They, they, they saw really good stops, um, made some mistakes as well. But um, the way that Johnson started the game and the way that, that cross for the first Werner opportunity mm. was absolutely superb. Mm-hmm. And over the last month, six weeks, or whatever, he, he's come on leaps and bounds. And, you know, it's it, maybe you know, people people can watch or listen to this and, and think that we're kind of delusional and we're apologists for the regime and all this kind of stuff. But I didn't know we're we're just um, we we love Tottenham. We're we're huge fans. We're very committed to the club, and we don't necessarily have the same opinion. And we're maybe not quite as knee jerk or, or or as I mean, I'm very emotional about Tottenham, and sure you boys are as well. Like you know, it's completely irrational and it admires far too much to me. But mm-hmm. like this business, or people, I mean, I literally seen somebody in a different group that I was talking to you two before uh, talking about like and out. And I don't know, I, I, some of you actually type those seven letters. Like, I don't know. I, I just got my whatever. I, I kept my fingers in my pocket and I didn't reply. But there, there is, and that this, there's now becoming more, even, even the, where we're at in the table, with the progress we've made. Um, yes, it was really awful the other day, but there's there's the, starting to grow a little bit more kind of confidence in the other side of things. The the group that are pretty negative and quick to um, quick to, to to start firing um, shots at the ownership yes. and all of that stuff again, and they're entitled Very to close. their opinion. Obviously, obviously, I just fundamentally disagree, and I think you're absolutely right, both of you, in in the league that we're in. Every team is capable of putting them in really, really good performances. And Newcastle are one of the better teams. I know they're messing players, but I mean, you get this kind of thing: people making comments about, "Oh, all our best players are going to want to leave." Like, no, no, they're not. Who's going to buy them? Where are they going to go? I mean, I'm not saying there aren't better options if you're a, a professional footballer. There's lots of clubs, or several clubs anyway, where you can earn more money. And there's several clubs. And moments where you got a better chance of winning a trophy. There's not that many of them, and how many of them have got like what's cash lying around? Because we were talking about Mickey's value the other day, yeah. you know, exponentially increasing on on what we signed them for. I mean, a I think he's probably happy where he is because he's developing as a player. He's at top club. He's under a great manager, or we I believe anyway. And um, you know, short of Real Madrid coming in and putting some stupid bid. There's not many clubs where people are going to go, but people are still chucking out these comments and people are going to be like, it's not the days of Berbatov and Carrick and any of that anymore. Just like, ask Carrick Kane. Be that kind of stuff selling. We, yeah. You know, like we saw <clears> Kane because Kane had just like, he had a year left in his contract. And, and fair enough, he, he could have left before, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I'm sorry, a bit, a bit of a waffle there, but it, it's just, yeah, the, the fans are really bugging me and I'm just I, trying not to get involved it's, I think it's a, yeah gosh, you. So, so I think as a as a group we also well not you Jim you weren't on it but the last podcast I think we have to take our responsibility as well because we talked up Vicky van der Ven so much <laughs> he had an absolute mess especially <laughs> Sai there's some great <laughs> memes of him though isn't there like you've got to just laugh at those situations because that is that's a rival player on his literally face down Oh, it's, it's, yeah. it was it three, couldn't have been three more. within five minutes. Three, three times within five, five minutes. But but back to the managers. That I, like, I what I get frustrated about is we always are. We be. I want a project. I wish we stopped. We sack managers yeah. every year on average. We need stability. We need, stability. <laughs> we need a plan. Yeah. So we go. We're going to hire this chief of football. He's going to hire a director of football. Head scout, new structure, lock manager on a four, five, was it five year contract, three years of extra two, so five years. Um, we're going to stick with him. Everyone's going to be patient, right? Everyone looks around the shoulders. Yep, yeah, all going to be patient, attacking football. Yep, yeah. lose 4 0. Get it, Ben. Start again. Rip up his contract. He's a fraud. It just, it just, we, everyone does the boring comparisons to, 
Arteta and Klopp in their first year. But it wasn't even about Arteta's first year. It was the second year yeah. where he technically regressed that team because they went on from winning a trophy to winning nothing, finishing eighth again. And then they got loads better in the following year and still only managed fifth. Well, Ange could finish fifth in his first season, right? And that's with one transfer window, not three. And then even Klopp as well. He had some, re- he had his opening 10 games, he went undefeated. And then he had some shocking, um, shocking defeats after that in the midway through the season. And he finished fifth as well, I think it was, yeah. in his first season. So it's just like, you, we all look at these clubs in hindsight after ripping on them and, say, and, and saying they're idiots for signing these rubbish managers. Then it turns good because they stick patiently with them. We, we should do the same. And then we all just lose our composure in the first kind of patch of bad form. I just find makes, it grating. The thing that makes me laugh most is I've seen so <laughs> many people claiming that we've regressed this season. I'm thinking, in what world? No, in what world have we regressed? <laughs> we've conceded like, less goals, scored yeah. more goals, and had more points. And we're higher in the <laughs> league. I mean, it, by what metric? I mean, it's insane. Mm. You, you, I was making the point that somebody said something along those lines uh, in the WhatsApp and uh, the other WhatsApp group, and I was like, I was saying, well, I mean, the experience of going to the stadium every fortnight or whatever compared to last year is, is you know, it, it's a massive difference. So that we, yeah. we, we actually do go enjoy it with positivity, with optimism. We know that we're going to see passages of play where it's going to be fantastic. Uh, you know, um, we also know that, that some of the problems we've discussed are, are a worry. But like, the experience of last year, I mean, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. So many games. Like, you, you lose to Bournemouth in injury time and it's like you just get back on the train and you get back on the plane and you've spent quite a lot of money i mean three figures every time i go over is, is two three hundred euro or something like that so i'm paying for my son as well like that and and i'm not rich by the way I, I work extra time to pay for my spurs addiction and <laughs> um, you know it, it's this year, I'm enjoying it. It's it's really good with the, the group of us that that meet up before and after the game. Like, you know, when it comes to the football, we we go up and look forward to watching the game. And you know, it's completely different. And I think also, like you said, Jim, when you're talking about progress, you 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 know, looking ahead to next season, if you're trying to be a, as objective and as um, clinical as you can, we, we recognise areas where strength strengthening needs to occur do we can see what and is trying to do and you know we we can see therefore that hopefully it may not be linear because nothing is but the progress should hopefully continue for, forward and like again when you're talking about liverpool i remember there was this the season that it was only about two or three seasons ago and that might have been during COVID times do you remember that when leicester were Basically in the in the top four for the whole yep. season, and then they screwed up on the last day against us. Okay, does, yeah. And Liverpool popped in and took their berth. And they, like, but Liverpool had, had that was after Liverpool had won the league. So it's not like Liverpool are some kind of like just turning up and turning over and over. And like every team has its ups and downs. And overall, definitely we're, we're I think going. It's a much much better experience to be a Spurs fan this season as as miserable as we were on Saturday lunchtime and it wasn't it was rubbish. Let's look at Chelsea and Man U. Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank God we don't support that. Yeah, exactly. And it's and people make it out like it's so simple and so easy. Like all we need to do is sign these three players. Yeah. We're better and next year we'll be above everyone else. But they leave out the fact that you've got Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal Liverpool all thinking the exact same thing. Oh, if we sign these three players, we're going to be to this next level. So everyone is striving towards the same goal, which is that one space at the top of the table. And we laugh at people like Todd Burley and go, what an idiot. Well, I'm sorry. He's just outwitted everyone again with, with PSR and FFP. He wouldn't be doing this. He's a billionaire for a reason. Like we say, these guys are idiots. He's got no football knowledge. Fine. But he knows how to navigate numbers and accounts and and regulations and he's running rings around everyone and everyone calls him more but anyway all these clubs have got very smart people upstairs with lots of very deep pockets who all want the same goal which is to make their asset as valuable as possible or to make their country or state their backing look as good as possible as popular as possible um but that's all led by getting your club as high as you can up to the table top of the table and being as big a brand as you can 
it's not as easy as just doing what we can do what's within our control, but they're also doing things that are their control to stop us. It, it isn't easy. <laughs> um, yeah. That's my rants. But should we wrap up there, guys? We're going to do another pod later on in the week where I think we're going to do one of those fun, kind of we're going to go through the squad. Who are we keeping? Who are we selling? Who are we signing a contract extension? I think we can have a squabble of at least a few of those big names in there. Because yeah. Sonny's contract's up for renewal end of next season. It's a big one. I, I, I um, hate to burst your bubble season. on that. But Andrew's already said in his latest presser, he's going to be good for years to go. <laughs> It's not what Ange wants, it's what we want. <laughs> and we've got the Werner debate. I know right now most will say get rid, but last week everyone was and, saying he's a bargain. And does yeah, Ndombele yeah. get another chance? <laughs> oh, well, if he had the right manager. Exactly. Ooh, that's him, and, him and Spence. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yes. Yeah. Get, get the get the cream <laughs> man in behind the goal at each end, which we shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, oh, boys, boy. up the Spurs. Uh, we can't no, Come on. Come on, you Spurs. 